Hello, everyone. Okay, and uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. And and my name is Li Mu, and I'm from the Supermap Research Institute. And today, I'm going to introduce the innovations and applications about new generation 3DGIS technologies and its user cases uh, as well. And those information are typically used for, for the professionals uh, who are uh, a little bit familiar with the 3D models uh, working for the related industries, such as urban planning, architecture, and civil engineering, and the geological surveys. Mm -hmm. 3DGS is currently experiencing a huge technological evolution from the traditional 3DGS to new generation 3DGS. And from my point of view, and 2D and 3D integration, integration GIS technologies mark the work, watershed. The first evolution lies in the transition from the local coordinate system to global coordinate system. And uh, to, in, order, in order to rep represent the real world. The second one is the integration of 2D and 3D GIS both in technology and in, uh, and in applications, which means 2D and 3D GIS system architecture are no longer isolated uh, from each other. Next evolution is from the uh, mainly uh, only the 3D focus on the, uh, 3D virtualization to 3D uh, spatial analysis and even to form a full 3D data model system. As for the data type, except for the terrain imagery man-made models, new kinds of data is widely applied in new, uh, gener new generation 3D GIS like beam data. The new generation 3D GIS has adopted the relation and the distributed database for massive data management. And as the and, and the application goes further, an open 3D data standard is needed for better data conversion and sharing. In terms of terminal applications, the uh, client and server mode was commonly used in GS applications, but now, as web-based applications are increasingly growing, 3D GIS is upgrading from the web plugin product to WebGL, which is completely plugin-free. Besides, users could extend their applications from PC to uh, multiple devices, such as cell phones, PET, and XR. Today, uh, I would like to talk about the way in which 3D, uh, 3DGS permeates across industries all the way to how we are serving and uh, sharing information over the multi-ends with various analytical techniques and a variety of new data types that well, we can take advantage of. And uh, now I will introduce 3DGS innovations from four uh, aspects. And the first one is the data model. Firstly, let's do some, uh, let's do, take a look at the data model evolutions. Last year, and we completed data model upgrading work. And uh, for 2D and 3D data model, is upgraded 2D network data model with topological relations to 3D network data models, and conveniently to uh, rep represent the urban road network and the beam pipelines. Secondly, the discrete data model, like uh, points, lines, and polygons uh, to 3D solid model, and, and it can be used to represent the objects less, uh, like buildings or the beam model components. 
in addition, in order to rapidly and continuously distribute it and heterogeneous data in our daily life, such as the temperature and the sunshine distribution, the traditional team and grid data are upgraded to team and voxel grid. Uh, for instance, we use a 3D solid model as beam in urban design and planning. And here's a project. In a real construction project, we need the accurate spatial relationships between the buildings along and over the railway by using the three, uh, 3D spatial query, such as contain, separate, uh, and intersect and all the methods, the, uh, the stakeholders could make better evaluation on the time and the investment. And with the evolution of our data model, 3D GIS could be used in a, a more professional way. And we, like in this picture, we virtualize antenna lobe and the fan beam by the solid model. By using that, now the internet service provider could actually see the signal performance that they provided to their clients uh, for them to better evaluate, optimize uh, their network service. And one, when, one of the advantages of 3DGS is virtualizing and analyzing the details, as we see in this picture, the vertically overlapped pipelines, sorry, <clears throat> uh, and the pipelines, the pumps, and some facilities are vertically overlapped, so it's hard to observe in 2D view. But now, with 3D network data model, such problem can be easily solved. Here is an uh, innovation of data model because we call it, uh, like, uh, call it a voxel grid. In this video, the air pollution in certain area can be represented using the voxel grid data model. We can see the distribution of pollution conditions by, filter, by filtering the uh, pollution range uh, from certain angles. Another good example of this application is the, in the uh, communication project, showing the signal intensity and the coverage, coverage of the 5G uh, network. We can see the uh, 5G base station within residential community, uh, from which yeah, we can easily detect the difference in intensity of the signal, and because it's, it could be uh, attached on the, build, on the surface of the building. From, uh, for the uh, service provider uh, to, evaluate, to evaluate, evaluate, optimize, and adjustment for this uh, base station constructions. Here's another professional use uh, of work, uh, voxel grid in geology field. And based on the high precision uh, seismic velocity sampling data, uh, when import, uh, importing the data into the 3 dgs uh, platform, we could uh, interpolate it into a voxel grade model, and then we could publish it to the web for, for better virtualizations. Uh, through this platform, uh, we can conveniently view the, uh, the seismic wave speeds at different types uh, under the ground. At the same time, according to the certain area data filtering, data filtering, user could dynamically display the 3D structure of different wave speed ranges, and we could find outliners uh, in the same underground depths. Uh, all this could provide a reference uh, for the study of the internal structure of the Earth. We, can, uh, we could also put 3D a uh, few data with certain feature values to represent by uh, represented by the voxel grid on the surface of the building uh, building models. <clears throat> in this way, the voxelized results could be attached on the building models, and we could see the 
distribution of the of the features values and in, in more proper ways. The second innovation is the, is the 3D spatial analysis. 3D spatial analysis now offers uh, enhanced performance uh, by using the graphic processing unit, let's call it uh, GPU. And this technology takes advantage of the parallel computing power of the graph <coughs> graphic cards to improve the, the performance uh, to many uh, analysis functions and operations, uh, which can be used for the, uh, let's, let's show in the slide, side lines, view side, and scan line, and others. <clears throat> to realize uh, the, generate the real on, uh, on time results. And the, what have to be mentioned is uh, the GPU analysis has no uh, real analysis results because of its technical nature, uh, which will be limited in use uh, in several years ago. Through the improvements of the analysis, we achieved to get the uh, analytical results that could be further improve the ability of 3D spatial analysis and make the analysis without more accurate and the application more flexible. Uh, for example, in the real world, the range covered by the shadows in the picture, I showed in the picture, uh, you can use this, uh, you can use the uh, solid model to do further computing and applications for better uh, decision making, especially in the urban planning. And what is more, in 2020, uh, we could do, do more uh, functions with GPU enhanced 3D special query. Let's take, uh, let's take a look at this video. And this is an example of a GPU based special analysis for the city skyline uh, from the viewer's position. The skyline analysis without is easily uh, extracted and then the urban planner will get better understanding of the building within the scan, within the scan line uh, to make better decisions. Special, a uh, 3D special query is common tools in GIS and the, what is worth to mention is uh, based on the GPU, we can get special query results on the fly so that thousands of beam components can be queried in a more efficient and in interactive manner. And it's hard to imagine using CPU, just using CPU to do the same job, especially on the web use. The 3D special query can also be used for, air, uh, for airspace management, for making sure the planes fly in, the, in their proper place and maintain uh, a safe distance uh, from each other. In beam and GIS integration scenarios, more flexible operation experience are needed. Then we provide the cross window selection, uh, like the engineer used in AutoCAD. It will select all the elements inside and touching the window. Uh, even the objects are obstructed. Is, uh, today, exploring the underground space is another essential direction of 3D GIS application. The most commonly used one is the uh, geological models. And nowadays, uh, during the structure of the city, we have tremendous demand for the metro system, especially for the big cities. The complex geological structure um, has always been the main difficulties for the construction that matters all the progress and the safety of the onsite workers. Um, Cascades, uh, uh, as shown on the screen, uh, like monsters, right, uh, troubling the engineers the most. During a uh, construction program, what is crucial for the engineers to know is the spatial distribution of the cascades and its size. If a shield machine moved through an underground area, confirms a considerable scale of cascades. This may potentially cause the shield machine fall into the dark caves. 
which is extremely disastrous. Let's check out this video for this issue. And this is a case, uh, this is a case uh, example as an example of a GS platform of 2D and 3D integration solution to sectioning on the geological model and cascades. By real-time analysis and rendering, and rendering to improve better decision making, as we can see in this video, and uh, we virtualize the position of the each shield ring and its surrounding cascades and measure the distance among them. By doing that, we can effectively forecast the safety risk and making more practical plans to avoid unnecessary loss. And the GPU uh, enhancement can also apply in underground 3DGS applications like geological models. This year, and uh, we also have a good, uh, lot of good improvements in uh, real-time uh, profile analysis and the real-time sectioning and other uh, real-time analysis. Uh, let's check out a few videos. And this is the profile analysis using uh, the GPU to enhance the uh, analysis, uh, analysis perform. And I just, like we can see in this video, uh, we can virtualize the distribution and the composition of each uh, geological layer. We also can do the sectioning and the excavation to observe the interior geological structures and find out more characteristic of the zone we are focused on. And the geological fault is a thin zone that important to the uh, stakeholders, let's say the planner and the project managers but always hard to see because of its complex uh, structure and the, the angle. And we use the vertical exaggeration, we, can, we could get better observation and interpretations of the faults. Okay, let's sum up the technical progress of 3D spatial analysis. In year 2014, and then the, we have the, uh, all the functions based on the GPU of the Swedish Special Analysis. In the year 2017, and we could return the analytical results as geometry for further use. In the year 2020, um, 3D Special Query enhanced, enhanced by the GPU and the, to make uh, the query uh, goes more smooth, smoothly. The third innovation I'd like to share is the um, multi-sources data integration. Uh, 3D geo, uh, geospatial data types can be uh, categorized as the, uh, the, po uh, the points cloud, and we'll take it like the point, and object imagery, um, it's, it's kind of a service. The beam, uh, the beam data uh, represented as the solid models and, the, uh, and the, also the geological model and also the uh, 3D field data we can use to represent the air pollutions. Each of them has unique way of modeling so we need more techniques in order to use them in the same context. Okay, first, uh, here comes to the very popular popular topic today, the beam and JS integration. It's called, let's call it the cross-industrial applications. And it is the most uh, attractive concept due to many, uh, in, in many cross-industrial applications. At the present, uh, beam is applied in the field of design and construction, but it cannot be used alone in the operation management. Uh, after, after the building is built, all right, right? Yeah, and then GIS can help the beam throughout the building's full life cycle management. And in this designing stage, it can be extended from the building designing to urban 
designing or an urban planning. And in the construction stage, it can also be combined with the uh, surveillance cameras and various sensors to carry out to carry out construction supervision. In the operation stage, uh, in, uh, in the operation and the maintenance stage, GIS can do uh, more jobs. For example, uh, the the uh, property management, uh, emergency pre plans, and etc. We now can do the uh, full beam data access by uh, direct, uh, direct integrating uh, between beam modeling software and the GIS platforms. And this comes down to the ability to read or important, uh, import more beam files into, G into the GIS platform. And what is worth to say, and the native access and I think it's quite important because it means more than just importing the, the data structure and the textures, but it keeps its real file structure and the information. As we all know, uh, repeated co data conversion will cause the geometry or the attributes information losses, and it is totally uh, <coughs> irretrievable. And here's a, uh, here's a case we support to directly re, uh, read the, the CATIA 3D XML. And this is, uh, we export it to the uh, GIS platform and keep this original file, uh, file structures. And this is, uh, this is a, a Revit uh, software and we could directly read an RVT file and import it into the JS platform. We can see the family and the, and the families are also kept. And this is a DGN format imported natively from the Bentley Micro Stations and the IFC and very popular uh, exchange, uh, beam exchange format. Uh, <coughs> We can import it, import and import it into the GS platform and kept uh, its original project tree structures. Yeah, as for the oblique imagery data, and as we all know, it's uh, always generated as a lot of tiles. And when we use it, it take more uh, the I/O input and output resource to load all the files. Often cause poor performance. But with uh, with help with help of merging the root nodes, as we see in the video, uh, especially the uh, the right one, the imagery data with more than one hundred square kilometers will be displayed in less than one second. The TIN, as uh, we call it, irregular triangles network, could preserve all the precedence of the terrains, and this. This feature ensures better modification results. And this picture, we could use team operators such as Mosaic to uh, modifying the team surface to make a beam and the team match each other. And these operations could increase streamline design and the collaborations for the real and the transit users. And more than just displaying the uh, multi-source data. The data, the, the, the data would be integrated in the same 3D scene for the better uh, for better and further use. As we as we know, the low precision data can be corrected and with high precision data by the same operations and the two set. Uh, <coughs> so the beam and the ob uh, obligate oblique imagery and the terrains and all of them can be seamlessly integrate, integrated uh, with each other. As we see in these pictures uh, in different industries. <coughs> and nowadays the data collecting method is getting more diversified and efficient than ever before, especially with the rise of 5G network. And under such circumstance, how to manage this massive data in a more efficient way? It is quite a big challenge to each 
GIS platform. What we do care is to improve the processing efficiency to minimize the, the time consuming by using distributed processing technologies. Okay, let's take a look at this actual data. It is a 3.3 terabytes of uh, oblique imagery data with uh, three centimeters ac accuracy, and it's containing about 30 million files within a coverage of 500 square kilometers. Let's imagine if we use the one single computer to manage the whole data, then I think no one can afford the time it takes. That is why we delivered the distributed computing capability to process this, this kind of massive data. And we use the distributed file system through distributed computing and we store the out, output data into distributed database. Then we put, uh, publish them uh, to, for the further use. Now the point cloud, uh, oblique imagery and terrain and imagery besides man-made models and beams, all these kind of GL, uh, <coughs> geospatial data could be processed in a distributed way. We have offered uh, the full processing solutions for all these kind of data. Based on the distributed technology, we have achieved efficient full process, pr pr full process management capabilities uh, for the 3D data access for the, uh, and the data processing and to service publish and even to the multi applications. Let's take a quick glimpse at the processing test. Uh, for example, this is the oblique imagery data and it's uh, with a file size of 292 gigabytes. Using the uh, send along mode, we could process this kind of data within 74 hours. But if we, we uh, use, uh, use the distributed mode, we uh, just seven nodes. It only takes three hours to finish all the uh, the four uh, operators, such as the uh, root uh, <coughs> root nodes merging, and uh, test compressions and simulations, which is twenty four times faster than this download mode. For the point cloud. The standalone mode takes 33 hours to finish the four operators, and the uh, distributed processing is only takes two hours to, to do the same job. It is 20, 21 times faster, uh, faster than the standalone mode. As for the uh, man-made models, conversion to the tiles, uh, there is uh, 80, 89,000 models about a coverage of 200 square kilometers. And this standalone takes, standalone most takes 13 hours to generate the tiles uh, for the publish. But in the, the distributed processing, it's only, uh, takes, uh, takes only two hours to do the same job. It is six, uh, point, six and a half times faster. So we can easily uh, see the difference between the two kinds of processing waste. Now, many GIS, uh, GIS tasks involve the repetition, repetition of the work and to further improve the processing, uh, processing uh, efficiencies, for, especially for the massive data. And the geoprocessing service addresses this need using a model a different model or different uh, combination of the models uh, to combine a series of operations in a sequence. And it, it will return the result after a task is, success, is successfully complete. Common geoprocessing operators are provided for data such as beam and man-made models, optic imagery, and terrain, and 3D field data, and even the point cloud. 
and can be flexibly customized according to the use scenarios, user scenarios. And due to different operating systems, uh, both the desktop GP and the web GP are also needed. Because of the, uh, the same file structure, the GP models could be created and reused uh, across all the uh, GS products, such as the desktops or the web use. Next, I want to uh, talk about is the uh, 3D GS data standard. Why do we need an, such an, an open 3D standard? One of the reasons is the 3D data, especially the models, are generated from various uh, modeling software in countless format, which is uh, which is are uh, which are difficult to be reused by different GS platforms, and many data formats can't uh, store uh, can store the attributes, especially which is very uh, difficult for the beam data. And this will cause a loss of the user information. All these troubles are lost in this project. In order to solve this problem of the, of the data sharing, uh, S3M, as we call it, the spatial 3D model, is open sourced on GitHub in the year of 2007. And this is a provide an open uh, the data standard for the 3D GIS use. The scope of the application of this standard is to provide an open uh, 3D data format uh, for better sh data sharing between the different systems and the devices. And it is this design for the efficient data transmission, uh, streaming, and virtualization of the massive multi-source 3D geospatial data with high performance in the network environment. And today, more the um, image, uh, oblique imagery modeling companies has, uh, such as the Oliger and Eastern John, uh, that special, and others uh, have applied the SM, SM data standards as uh, their uh, one default, one well, their default as port format, and they make and made their product to generate F3M tiles. Uh, here's uh, the uh, <coughs> oblique, uh, oblique imageries produced by the DA, DS, uh, DA special. And this is another oblique imagery data generated by the DGI Terra with high uh, resolutions. And now more uh, manufacturers in more industries are also applying the F3M data standard. This is one of our partners who access the public uh, imagery data through the F3M data standard uh, to provide a full range of this uh, data or GIS service, and including the uh, construction and the maintenance of the streets and the cities. And this is all, uh, this is complete in the uh, uh, game engine that we call, uh, called the Vintus, a very famous uh, game engine used in Germany. The last innovation I will talk about today is the multi applications. Now, more users uh, need web application architecture in the architecture in their uh, business system. So, so the WebGIS product based on WebGL is their first choice uh, because of the uh, lightweight, plug-free, uh, cross-platform and brother-based virtual, uh, virtual globe with the focus on precision and time dynamic data. And it, it could help users to unleash their uh, potential of 3D GIS data by making it easier for both developers and users to virtualize, uh, analyze, and share 3D data. The WebGL product has three uh, main features. The high realistic 3D effects and the rich data representation and the full functions and with powerful performance. 
Okay, let's see the special effects first. And this is this is often often a focus in the development of the, the of the three D applications. For example, the lighting and the shading techniques for better three D effects. Self-luminous and dynamic textures are also used to uh, outline, better outline the buildings. Bloom and highlightings uh, to make more technological and the uh, sun fee special effect. And this is we call it the line scanning to support custom scan textures to achieve different scan effects. Make the uh, make the special effects more flexible. This is to simulate the effect of signal emissions. And the more post processing effects are also provided on GS pro, uh, platform. This is the bloom effect of the building outline. The physically based rendering um, is for the high fidelity rendering for the real time 3D models. Uh, just like the name suggests, these rendering techniques uh, will uh, use real world physics to calculate the way the surface uh, to, react to, to react the real light and the materials. And we also have the particle system for better uh, gradient performance. And we also provide the more particle emitters, uh, like the uh, point emitters or the region emitters to make the regular uh, natural phenomena. And we have also the built-in particle templates, such as the flame, fireworks, ring, and etc. Uh, here's a demo where we use the particle system to represent the fireworks. And for the better virtualization, we could add more, add or edit more complex, uh, complex materials in Unity, and then we have we provide a tool to export these uh, special effects into the uh, WebGL JS platform. Let's check out the result. Uh, this is a rendering effect of the CBD night view, and using the uh, exporter uh, by the Unity. And this is called the order independent and transparent. Uh, we, call, we could call it for short, like, like OIT technique. It's used to see the internal part of model for better understanding the structure, and the, which is uh, widely used in the beam industry. And besides, besides the 3D facts, uh, WebGL product is, uh, is of full functionalities. And it also has the spatial analysis capabilities, such as the measurement, spatial querying, and the spatial analysis, et cetera. In addition, uh, the 3D uh, WebGL product have, uh, support, has supported the uh, MVT uh, vector tiles. And we could also do the selection attribute querying uh, by, the, uh, by interacting with mouse mouse clicks, and we can also finish the color setting and, which, and switch the uh, visibility based on their, um, each of the field values. We also uh, support a large scale of MVT renders. Uh, maybe it's kind, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of, we can render uh, millions of the, <coughs> millions of the uh, vector data in real time. And instancing uh, rendering uh, allows to render thousands, even millions of 3D models, as shown in this picture, uh, like the forest and the different types of grass with high performance, which quite useful in the uh, natural resources industry. Also, um, this is the splitting display uh, for browsing overground and underground the uh, situations at the same time in the same scene by just moving the slider.
in the WebGL product, uh, it has the capability of stream a massive 3D geospatial data with uh, to the terabytes or petabytes. And let's see, uh, let's see in the picture, we could uh, stream the terrain, uh, global scales terrain and the imagery, and the city scales of the man-made models and oblique imagery. And nowadays, we, we've seen uh, some expectations from the consumer like gaming community that want to infiltrate the professional GS platforms to the game engines. And this demand is really escalating rapidly and it is starting to impact the GS industry in many ways now. And we have noticed this change and use this cross-industry integration of 3D GS software and game engines as we see in this picture, 3DGS can bring the uh, bring game engines the capability to uh, to stream geospatial data with real geography ge <coughs> coordinates, and game engines is creating uh, the realistic and the immersive experience for 3DGS. This integration will empower to build digital uh, training better. And this is a structure of the uh, SuperMap CSDKs for game engines. And we delivered as the SDK and the plugin that enables to access the real world data and the GIS functions. And this is plugin provides samples and UI panels and API to create interactive uh, 3D experience with geospatial data. And here's the, the functions. Uh, the, is the, the first one is the GIS data visualization, which is support to stream the multi-source 3D GIS data dynamically way and support the online or offline uh, viewing mode. The second one is the function, uh, including the special analysis and, and the query. We can do the sectioning, contour, contouring map, and attribute queries. And this is the plugin uh, <coughs> run in the Unities. Let's check out the videos. And in this plugin, we have supported uh, various kind of 3D GIS data with real world coordinates. And we can do the real time box clipping. in the game engines. And for the DM data, we can uh, make the contour map analysis and adjust the parameters on the fly. And this is another uh, popular game engine. And Unreal engines, we also make the plugin for this game engines. Let's check out a few videos. And this is a video shows the global scale terrain and imagery a dynamic loading in Unreal engines. And the, with the, uh, the terrain and the imagery data could also interact with the shades and the <coughs> lights, lights <coughs> provided in the Unreal engines. And we also support uh, different kinds of the geospatial data to run this dynamically in the Unreal engines. <coughs> the beam man-made models uh, Ob oblique imagery data and the point clouds. And here is the simulation of e emergency plan by unit 3 gs data with the particle system in, in Unreal engines. Okay, for the GS and the game engines, we could provide the cross-industrial applications uh, 3DGS could, uh, for the game engine users, 3DGS provide them the massive data access as spatial analysis capabilities. And for the GS users, uh, the game engines give them the realistic and immersive interaction experience. And 
<coughs> we think, and we think the 3D GIS and plus the game engines will build a more brighter ecosystem for each other. As for the mobile use, now uh, more users uh, choose their uh, choose a more a uh, convenient way to do the uh, data collecting and uh, querying and uh, analyzing jobs, <clears throat> such as the pipelines, applications, applications, and the with the AR we can easily to see the internal parts of the, of the buildings. And here's uh, is a real uh, project, and we call it the uh, we call it the the pipeline applications. And as we see, the most uh, uh, pipelines is hidden from the uh, usual views. And by mapping the GIS coordinates to the real locations, users could really, really, really see the underground pipes, underground pipes and its operation information in real time and do the query, uh, attribute queries to make their uh, work more easier. And based on the previous pages, new generation 3D GIS technological architecture could be summarized as using 2D and 3D integration data model to represent the full spatial GIS data. A more com uh, comprehensive integration of multi-source uh, heterogeneous data, such as the oblique uh, imagery model, beam points cloud, and the 3D and 3D field data, and we adopt the open uh, special 3D model data format, and improve the 3D GIS standard system to realize efficient full uh, process management by using the distributed management to uh, better service the uh, to serve the big hu uh, the huge amount of data. Also, we applying the Cutting edge te IT technologies such as the WebGL and game engines to empower and AR and other technologies to empower 3D and GS application in various industries. Okay, finally, let's talk about the, some user cases in many indus industries. This is a uh, city planning or urban planning, um, which is run on uh, run on the web run, uh, on the website, and this platform demonstrates the multiple integrated land use, environmental and uh, sub uh, subterranean, and infrastructure modeling and uh, scenario planning, and this uh, and propels the special uh, planning into the realm of the system level. Territorial planning and form hostile uh, planning of the urban and the natural systems and the resilience urban solutions. The Xiong'an New Area Planning and the Regulation uh, Examination Platform. In this project, uh, there's, there's mainly three features. The, uh, the first is the multi source data access, and the second one is the automated data processing workflow. And to help the urban planners to minimize their uh, labor cost, we uh, we help them to make the full process automated examinations. As for the data access, we complete the various data access, including the beam data or the planning uh, business data, and the uh, also the, the geological models. And here's the full work uh, workflow. We have uh, we have completed the automated workflows uh, as the data management use be, uh, use beam as a solid model to computing for the later uh, zoning uh, zoning examinations and then publish to the planners. The second one is use WebGL for the uh, examination without display. The third one is high efficient high efficiency of the full workflow, and uh, as the stakeholders. Imagine uh, asked the whole workflow will be finished in less than 50 minutes. Okay, based on 3D GIS technology such as the uh, data data models and the spatial operations, 
we help the users to form hundreds of the urban planning digital tool, digital rules uh, for automated examinations, such as the population or land use or road den density, etc. And here's the general planning. We could see the land use, mixed use, and the road networks, all the general planning for, <coughs> for their uh, examinations. And here's the zoning regulation examinations uh, about the, including the population land use, the blocks, and the distribution of high schools. And this is the regulations among the blocks. We can do the setbacks or the uh, building heights and others examination. And here's another beam or seam plus GS applications. And uh, with, with this in integration, uh, we can do the e equipment inspection, equipment maintenance, and energy analysis and optimization and emergency pre plans in a 3D scene <coughs> for the better use. The 3D full temple spatial big data platform uh, is we is another big project uh, in the <coughs> in our in our users. It provided the automated processing workflow for massive geospatial data and the six ways to uh, six ways of temple spatial data and eight typical scenarios in full application life cycles. Uh, here's the data type. Uh, its total size is a it's over 2.3 terabytes, including different kinds of data, such as the uh, oblique imageries and man-made models, and uh, just through 3D geological models. And we help users uh, to sharing geospatial workflows, uh, especially for each kind of data, and combined with their uh, business rules. Uh, here's a video to streaming large data sets with high performance. And its, data, its coverage is uh, 660 square kilometers. And here's the full types of the geospatial data supported, including the um, city buildings, the underground pipelines, and the beam, and point cloud. And the six ways of the temporal spatial data representations, and we have the uh, multi-window display and the fast streaming for the city buildings, all the analysis using heat map and dot matrix display for shadow analysis, sunlight distribution using the voxel grid, grid and the net views. Also the eight typical scenarios in full application life cycle we can see these uh, land, land use changes and the urban plains comparisons, skyline analysis and the construction pro uh, progress and other useful functions. The last one is the uh, natural resources management. Uh, in this industry, uh, with these 3D GIS technologies, we can do this special dis uh, distribution of the natural resources overground and underground integrated management and the ecological red line distribution and the real estate management. Okay, this is my speech today. And we do hope to use a uh, new generation of 3GS technology to empower uh, more users across industries to better understand their 3D geospatial data and uh, make better use of it to fit into the world. Uh, thank you.